Hey guys, Loman02 back with another cube draft. Uh, Moto's done some updates, so all the card sizes are way off. I tend to prefer smaller card sizes. I hope it's not a problem for anyone. Um, okay, well this pack is pretty underwhelming. I mean, we could take a Mystical Tutor and just speculate on it, because it's probably independently the most powerful card in the pack. Let's take a Mold Drifter, which is just a fine value blue thing to be doing, and hope to wheel like a Pyromancer. We could take a Pyromancer and hedge on being blue-red and possibly going into red deck wins, which is probably actually more open than Mystical Tutor. Mystical Tutor is more powerful than Young Pyromancer, but if you think through my logic here, Young Pyromancer goes in more decks than Mystical Tutor, I think, does. Mystical Tutor goes in, like, very powerful decks, like combo decks, is where you tend to want it. Um, even, like, if you have Ancestral, like, Mystical Tutor is not that great with Ancestral, because you're just like, alright, I spend a turn spending a mana to get this thing, then I cast it, I've spent two mana and two cards to get two cards, so... Um, or three cards. So I go basically go get a two for one for, you know, two mana and two cards. It's just like, I don't know. So I think I'm most keen on taking Pyromancer here. I, I'm not sure if that's right or not. It could just be mystical, but I think I'm going to take Peasy, actually. Yeah, I'm going to take Peasy here, actually, I think. All right, there are no good blue cards in this pack, with the exception of, like, Pastor Might's fine. There is a Bramaz, which is I think is just a good card. I love I like that card a lot. There's also Tahiri, which is pretty cool, you know, for finding like combo pieces. I could take the Pester Might and try to build the twin shell. Or I could take Imperial Recruiter, which is just a good value dude, but I think has a, a shockingly enough, I think Imperial Recruiter will wheel more times than Pester Might will. Could also just take Manic Vandal and just stay more open. So I'll play Manic Vandal in just about anything. Like in blue red it's fine. In red deck wins it's fine. Um I think it's just a fine card in general. I don't know if I mind that to stay with my first color pick. There's an Imperial Recruiter in here to fight over it, but it's not really a Red Deck Wins card. Um, and there's Jackal Pup. Uh, there's a Gristle Brand. There's a JVP. Jackal Pup is very likely to wheel, right? And there's a Tinker, which is also very powerful. I think I like JVP in this pack. And if we wheel the Jackal Pup, that's sweet, because we could be in like Red Deck Wins, but I think JVP is more correct here. There's a Time Twister and a Lightning. I, Twister is very, very powerful. Search for his Kant is fine, but it's really slow. I, I think, actually, in this deck, I think I like the Chain Lightning better. I mean, Time Twister or JVP is kind of a nombo. Um, Search for his Kanta and JVP is kind of a combo, but I think I'm going to go this way. Blue is very open, this uh, this draft. I mean, it, not very open. I mean, maybe these packs are just, like, littered with blue cards. Um... We haven't seen, like, power blue cards. Like, you know, like, there's been a, like, fourth pick mana drain. Okay, and there's this back, which is very medium. We could take a Thalia, because I think it's a sign that, like, white is probably open, because she's very good. There's a Nexus of Fate, which is just kind of, again, like, pretty medium, I think. I'm not a huge fan of it in this cube. Um, there's Seething Song, which is, like, a powerful storm card. There's Bayou, which is just a good land. You know, I'm going to pick up the Thalia, I think, and speculate on my typical deck, because I, I think she is that good that, like, you know, if, if you are building that deck, she's a top card in it. And there's a Flame Slash here, which is a fine blue-red card. There's also Thing in the Ice. I think I don't mind Thing in the Ice. I don't have a lot of great spells yet. Um, I'm not going to take uh, Spectre Procession over Flame Slash or Thing in the Ice, though. Not that, like, either is, like, really, really great, but I think Flame Slash is fine, for, like, a blue-red tempo deck. Yeah, Spectral Pross is not something I would pick up to go with Thalia. I just, it's a fine card, but it'll probably even come around. It is close to a last-pickable card. It is a card I have played in White Weenie, but uh, I'm generally, like, it's I'm not excited to be playing it, right? Okay, well, there's Abbott and there's a Burn Spell. Um, Red Deck Wins is probably open if Abbott's coming this late. So is White, though. But I think Abbott is just a little bit better than Burst Lightning. Um, I'm going to still leave Jason there for now, but I don't know if I'm going to be playing it. And I will play Flame Slash in a Red Deck Win style deck. It's not the best at one, but it's still okay. <clears throat> it does deal with like annoying cards like Corsair Crew Fix and stuff like that, or like Batter Skull for one time. Um, really, it's, a, it's enough time if you can deal with Batter Skull once in this style of deck if you're going to play Red Deck Wins. Because for them to pay three to recast it again is just generally... It's it's a bridge pretty far. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure on the, the, the first pick there. I mean, it, the pack was weaker. I don't think Manser was wrong, though. I think Manser could have been, like, actually a pretty ideal pickup just to stay the most open. Because I think Mystical Tutor pulls you into a very specific type of deck. 
or you want to incentiv- incentivize you to play a certain type of deck, as opposed to like having the options between like two to three decks with Pyromancer. Now, I'm not really getting there yet on spells, but I think we're going to find a way. All right, white's probably a little more open than Jace Arctic Thought. Meh, medium. In this pack, would I rather have Avalanche Riders or Glory a Bringer? I'm not a fan of either card. I could also be going into, like, white as well, because Swords of Plowshares and Selfless Spirit are both just great cards. Am I giving up on anything in this pack? I mean, signaling, possibly. Glory Bringer is pretty fine. I mean, it's a lot of damage. It kills a thing. I like it better than Avalanche Riders, I think. I'm going to pick up the Bringer here. Alright, and there's... Well, Siege Gang. Okay, Imperial Recruiter. And again, like I said, I, I think Imperial Recruiter is a better card in a vacuum over Pestermite, but folks will pick Pestermite before Imperial Recruiter, which is kind of odd to me, because Imperial Recruiter is more powerful in a vacuum. And, like, for right now, I'm going to leave him in here. I think we're going into red. Because blue definitely got sucked up. I don't think we're going to see any blue cards. And someone else is touching red, I think. I don't think heavily, but I think they are in it to an extent. No one's in white. Like, white is just wide open. Um, yeah, the pup came around. Our, this deck is open. And, like, history, but history is not a very good card. And Fire Drink Seder, yeah. I mean, we're just we're getting this deck. And when the signal tells me to take a deck like this, I'm going to take it, guys. I mean, you guys know this if you've watched any of my videos. Like, I will play aggressive decks in cube. I don't think they're bad. I think they're pretty good. Um, what's the best card here? I mean, Bane Slayer, God, I love this card so much. It's so, such a gorgeous card. I'm going to take a uh, Secure Tribal. I think it's the best card in that pack. Uh, between these two, they're both bad, but Pelucranos. They really need to... And I don't know who... I think it was uh, Chion maybe helped redo this, this cube. This cube is great. Green is horrible. <laughs> like, I think it's probably Chion's predilections. I don't know. I'm going to blame you, Chion, Paul Chion. Because green is so bad. I mean, like, green with blue is good. But, like, green on its own, mono green is just garbage. Like, just, like, it's such a rough deck. You're just like, God, this is rough. Because, like, you just... You have cards like Pelucranos. Like, really? Like, this is what I get to do on four? All right, well, I mean, Black Lotus, right? I mean, what else is in here? There's really nothing for my deck in here, either. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take a Lotus. I mean, I'm not going to be doing anything cool with it. I'm going to be, like, casting, like, a bunch of one-drops with it, but, uh, <laughs> seems good. All right, Mind Twist, Goblin Guide, Fire Blast. Fire Blast will likely wheel. What? Fire Blast wheels more of the time than Goblin Guide does, so... And I will play a Fire Blast in this deck. That'll be a good card for me. I'm not really keen on playing Glorybringer. I'm going to leave it in for now. Siege Gang, no way. Like, I just, I can't do that. I love Siege Gang to death, but it's really, it's it's either a, a red-green or a red-blue card, is, is kind of my experience with the card, at least today. Like, historically, it was just good enough to even Oath into at one point, like, you just Oath into the silly thing and, like, you know, kill a couple creatures, let it die, and then, like, you know, guy is blessing it back into your deck and do it again, and eventually burn your opponent out with it. That was, like, a one-win strategy off of Oath, I think, at one point in time. Which is funny to, to say that because you see how far creatures are gone and now you just, you know, Oath, Emrakul, you know, Fire Breath, win the game. Um, or Crystal Brand or whatever. Or sometimes Inferno Tide, I've seen that one. I've seen Dramoka. There's a lot of crazy things you can do with Oath now that is far better than, you know, Spike Weavers and Siege Gang Commanders <laughs> coupled with, uh, with Gaius Blessings to recurse it over and over and over again. All right. Well, there's a sword. There's a mox. I'm going to take the mox. The sword may or may not wheel. This pack has something for it. Our Mistress Factory is pretty good. But the mox, well, yeah, the mox is still probably correct. I don't really have a lot of colorless requirements so far in this deck. If Sulfuric Vortex is open, it'll probably come to us. would be my guess. All right, again, no red cards. Really weird. Maybe it's just how the packs are breaking. I don't know what to take here, guys, because uh, I don't really have a pick. I mean, I'm all in on this deck. I mean, Pyrotic Ritual, sure. I mean, I'll just cut the red card. Just let them see no red cards. Really kind of a bad uh, first couple of picks. I mean, like, Mox Jet is hard to complain about, but I would actually rather just have another one drop for the deck, I think. Or like a one-mana burn spell. Like, I'd rather have Lightning Bolt and Mox Jet in this deck, I think. Um, I mean, it lets me turbo on a Imperial Recruiter, which still is not really a great card for the deck. I mean, it's it's fine. You'll play it, but it's kind of bad for three mana. You really want your cards all to just have immediate impact. All right, Eidolon is the kind of immediate impact we want, and it's it's a good two drop for Red Deck wins, so I will play it. <clears throat> Over the uh, Phoenix, which, I mean, Phoenix, I mean, if I end up playable light, I'd play that card too, but... I tend to be low to play it. Like, I think the best fours in this deck tend to be Fiery Confluence, which, if you if we don't open it or see it early, like, we're not going to get it. Uh, Koth the Hammer, 
Chandra, Torch of Defiance, and there's really not many others. All right, so Dire Fleet, Daredevil. What am I at on creatures? Or is it Incinerate? The Dire Fleet could come around, but Dire Fleet is pretty powerful. It also has First Strike, and yeah, I think here. What do I have for burn? One, two. I don't have a lot of burn, but I think I like taking the creatures before the burn. All right, there's Kiki Jiki. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll take him. If we get Zealous Conscripts, we could be like the the, the, the medium red deck that has combo in it. Um, I don't really want to play Kiki Jiki, though. Yeah, this pack has not gone that, that well for us. I don't think someone's cutting us. I think the pack's just opened weirdly or oddly. Um, Sword's good, but Strip Mine is exactly what this deck wants. I mean, getting a Strip Mine that late is just like, yep. No one really wants to be an aggro right now, because Strip Mine is just great in aggro. You can combo with it, too, but I think the, the Strip Mine combos in this format are kind of meh. They're kind of marginal. I am very playable light right now, though. I have three mana sources. Uh, well, I guess Strip Mine's kind of a spell. You can count it as a spell. So you're pretty much... This is like one of those decks where you're just always going to like just goozle their land as soon as you get it. You're just like, bam. Just put you down a mana drop. Want to just cut you, tie you up. You're basically using it as a Rashad and Port for cheaper. For one turn, only. Rashad and Port obviously can scale a little better. For more mana, it can scale better over time because it can always, you know, you get the choice of which land you want to um, tap down. I'm not saying Rashad and Port's better than Strip Mine, but there are there are benefits to to both cards. Strip Mine's definitely the more powerful card, but Rashad and Port over time can can do a lot to change the course of a game. And obviously, there's Wasteland in this format as well. This pack, yeah, had nothing for us if I recall correctly. Um, we could try to. I'm going to sideboard this. I'm not going to play Experimental Friends. You just start casting everything off the top of my deck. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> you know. Could try to do that. <laughs> Chain stuff together. Just dude and dude and dude. <laughs> we have Black Lotus in the deck. Maybe it could work. If there's a real home for Experimental Frenzy, it's probably in this style of deck. I don't think it's that good in the Storm, because you can't play cards out of your hand. you got to spend four more mana just to get rid of it. Yeah, Fire Blast came around. So, pack three is hopefully going to be a little better for us. I really don't want to play this guy. Like, he's a good card, but like he's more of a mid-range dude. I guess he also fights against mid-range pretty well. Like I can go bigger against mid-range. And I am lacking in burn. Maybe the incinerate will come around. It may have been greedy to not take it over taking the Dire Fleet Daredevil, but I, I want to have, like, probably 12 creatures in this deck and then start prioritizing burn a little more heavily. And my creatures are kind of shoddy right now. I like Manic Vandal, which is just very medium. All right, Mistress Factory or Sword? You know, oddly enough, well... No, it's got to be Factory, right? Yeah, it does, I think. Factory is just really good in this style of deck. I mean, it's just a free body. It helps you cast your spells. Like, I do like the sword for this deck, too, because I'm a little playable light. And it kind of hurts to take a land over a playable, um, especially at 16 cards. But I don't think our deck's being cut. I really don't, because like, of, of what we've been wheeling. Like, if that one pack that had the Eidolon and the Fire Blast in it, like, if someone's playing Red Deck Wins, you take Fire Blast. Like, that was the only card in there to take. So I think someone else is in red. They're touching it, but just for burn, possibly. Probably like a blue-red shell. All right, we're getting Phoenix. And right now, like, yeah, get in there, you. Like, I would rather play that card than, I think, Glorybringer. That could be wrong, but this card is really hard to deal with. you got to, like, path it or plow it or something. All right, yeah, Legion's Landing. Whatevs. The card is actually kind of annoying against our one drop, so if someone played it, they'd be like, damn it, <laughs> I got this Jackal Pup, now i got to burn this 1-1 one, one off. Hero Blade Hold. Yeah, that deck's open, too. All right, so, yep, Zergo. Um, over not much else. Maybe we'll wheel the Relic of Progenitus and have a decent sideboard option. Yep, another one drop. This is kind of like a turbo aggro deck. And we're at 18 with two lands and two other mana sources. Well, all right, so Fearic Vortex is going to wheel, right? Oh, there's Ancestral in this pack, too? I mean, Ancestral's going to get picked by someone. But, like, Monastery Swiss Spear is probably a higher pick. Like, you don't pick up Sulfuric Vortex, right? It's like it's like Fire Blast. I'm going to take the one drop and be greedy and hope to wheel it, because I do want that card for my deck, but... I mean, I can't take Ancestral there responsibly. I don't have fixing for it. I, I was, like, tied up on the blue-red train in the beginning of this, and then I was like, eh. I kind of got off it. Uh, we saw, like... Honestly, I think we saw too many blue cards early uh, that we couldn't cut the signal. And taking JVP, I think, was right where we did, but then we saw, like, packs like, two and three blue cards. You know, we're just like, ugh. Um... I don't really want to play Imperial Recruiter either, so we'll see. I mean, right now, Young Peasy may not be good in this deck. Like, let's see. We have a lot of creatures. All right, Easy Char over the Wasteland. Like I was just saying, I think I want more spells for this deck. I mean, Trigger Prowess. 
Um, and then also fuel the young Pyromancer. Because I'm a little light on burn. I have Chain, Flame Slash, Char. Now I have Lightning Strike. Over, oh god, Channel. Palace Jailer is great. Plow is dirty. I'm going to take this though. And you don't want Winter Orb in this deck. Winter Orb is a white card. It really is a white... Well, you can play it with like Tezzeret and a bunch of artifact mana as well. But like it's either in that deck where you have just tons of artifact mana or it's in the white weenie deck. Because that deck deals damage through permanence and this deck generally relies on, on some number of spells as well as permanence. Um, I'm not a dark Goblin Dark Tours deck. I'm, I'm at this many lands. I'm going to play this. I'll, I'll play it. And I actually will play this in my decks to thin my deck out. <laughs> like, I can play a little more land with a with a fetch land and a strip mine in there and uh, and not be upset about it because, I mean, the strip uh, the fetch land does thin me out and the strip mine's a spell. The factory's a spell. Could also put Glorybringer in. Put in a five drop. Four is where you tend to want to have the buck end in this deck. At least I, I have come to find. It's not a Kiki Cheeky deck. We just have a bunch of like one drops. Like mono one drop aggro. And then an Imperial Recruiter that just looks kind of medium. Alright, well, Hazaret is great. I mean, I don't mind Thunderball Hellkite, but Hazaret is a beast. It actually is going to be pretty good in this deck because our curve is very, very low. We just have a ton of artifact mana. We have a ton of we have two good like pieces of artifact mana to ramp into this thing and burn through our cards. And then just get down to nothing and just start smashing them for five with haste and indestructible. Seems good. Seems really good. <clears throat> yeah, I I tend to actually think the aggro decks are a lot better than folks give them credit for in uh in these cubes. And if they're open, I'm gonna take them. And I think this deck was um White was more open than this was. I mean, just looking at how the cards have kind of fallen, White was more open. There were some decent green cards. I mean, there were green cards, right? But I don't know how many of them were decent. Like We saw, like, you know, like, two and three green cards coming around on wheels last time. So maybe someone picks up a Sulfuric Vortex just to snipe it. I hope they don't snipe my Sulfuric Vortex, because I really want that card for this deck. Um, if I don't get it, I'm going to be playing Glorybringer, you know, which is, like, eh. Not really where you want to be, but what can you do? Oh, wow. Yeah, Goblin Rabble Master is perfect. I mean, Runaway Steamkin is... I, I've actually found it to be okay. Like, it's just a dude. Oh, wow. Well, we're a very dude-heavy deck. I like Firebolt a lot, but I think it's got to be this. And then I don't really want to play you, so I'm going to sideboard her for now. Yeah, I mean, in a 14-creature, you know, deck, I think Hellrider is more correct than Firebolt there. I have Flame Slash to deal with little creatures. I don't have, I don't have like, you know, a lot of burn. I only have a little bit of it. But here's fingers crossed to hope that the um, the sulfuric vortex wheels. If it does, I feel like we're in a, a pretty good place. Yeah, I may play 16 and just play the rekindling phoenix. Play 16 lands, play rekindling phoenix. Rekindling phoenix is not horrible. It's just slow. <laughs> Black Lotus, rabble master, go. <laughs> oh, Black Lotus of this deck just cracks me up because it's like the most fair lotus ever. I mean, it's not that fair, but it's pretty fair. <laughs> okay, this pack did not have anything for us regardless, right? So just, we'll take the card we could play in this deck. There's a Sulfuric Vortex. So it's a Plateau. Two fetch lands that late. And a Fast Bond. I think Fast Bond's pretty good in this cube. I mean, you have to get the support to make it work. I mean, but I'm not opposed to first picking it as far as the speculation. Because, I mean, if you get, like, the Time Twister, which you saw in the pick, uh, pack one, um, it's pretty good. Wasteland? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty free, right? Palace Shield this late? Oh, come on, guys. Card's so good. Card is so good. I mean, folks don't realize how good this card is. Just dumb. All right, Goblin Dark War is not going to get played. Uh, Thunder Maw? All right. Thunder Maw's a dude. It's huge. <laughs> Alright, so we're at 26 with four lands. 22. Eh. We're a little... Oh, that's sweet. Now we don't have to play, like, a five drop. I don't like Steamkin, Runaway Steamkin, but it's, it's it's good enough for this deck. Like, it is a 1-1 one -one that pumps itself over time. It's kind of like... It's kind of like an attacking... Well, it's kind of like a worse version of Shrine of Burning Rage, is what it is. 
And it also makes mana randomly, so you can, like, attack with it, hit them, and then, like, power out some other random nonsense, and then build it back up again. It's not bad in this deck. It's okay. I like an Imperial Recruiter for it. Do I have to play Recruiter in this build? Let's add basics. Yep, 13. That's a 17 land deck. Do I cut one and put an additional four in there? No, I can play 17 because I have Arid Mesa. I wouldn't doubt, right? Like, it's just generally better to have an extra land. I'd rather be a 16 land deck, though, because I think it'll run better. But you know what? I, I, mana's important. Like, you don't want to... I mean, although... I don't know. That's a ton of one drops. I'm going to jam it with 17, I think. I don't really have great draw. I mean, I have... Imperial Recruiter to find what? Manic Vandal, Rabble Master, Abbott, Dire Fleet. Dire Fleet's pretty cool. So is Abbott. Young Peasy, Eidolon... Basically, most of my deck can be found with uh, the Imperial Recruiter. I could... You know what? Here, here, let's do this. Cancel. Let's let's cut Imperial Recruiter. I'm going to play the Rekindling Phoenix, I think. I think that makes more sense. I, I, I know that guy finds most of my deck, but I'm a tempo deck. Like, I don't want to be tutoring for, like, minor value. For, like, the most minor of value. Like, it's better to have a 4-3 th flyer that's hard to kill. And, like, you know, it's hard to block, hard to kill. And, yeah. I think I like that a lot better. So this deck seems pretty sweet. I mean, it's got some things and some stuff going on. It's got a strike, it's got a chain, it's got flame slash, it's got char, and it's got fire blast for burn, and it's got sulfuric vortex. Got a little bit of a game against artifacts. It's really just a quick deck. It's just got a fast deck. It's got a bunch of ones, which is kind of its power that I'm going to have to play to. All right, we're playing against uh, the Lionhearted. Um, ooh, this hand's rough. Mull. This hand's a keeper. Put it on top. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> this if we don't get to rest, this would be sweet. Alright, dude. Cool dude. Are you cool with this? I mean we're we're YOLO in this, right? All right. Yes! <laughs> Red deck wins with Black Lotus, the fairest of lotuses. Uh, all right, playing against Red. Do you want Bonfire of the Damned? It's interesting. Nah. I'm just going to resub it. All right, this deck is going to have liabilities against green decks because it doesn't have a lot of burn to deal with them. Like, Firebolt would have been the better pick there if we wanted to deal with green creatures, but... um. I took the Hell Rider. Hell Rider obviously paid off there. I mean, well, I mean, Black Lotus ended up pretty much anything on turn one. Like, attacking for seven damage on turn one is just ridiculous, right? It's just like, what are you going to do about it? And then I have Fire Blast. So if I draw any mountain, it's like additional four. <laughs> it's just nonsense. Just absurdity. <laughs> Black Lotus. All right, this hand is keepable because it can deal with a lot of creatures. I'm going to keep it as a threat. Go ahead. Dude, okay. Don't want to draw more land, so I'm going to fetch here just to thin my deck. Bolt. I'm going to buy time here, and it's possible. I mean, they made this a land drop here or something like that. If that, that happens, that's really good. All right, they did not miss a land drop. Rofellos? No Rofellos? All right, this dude. Lightning Strike. Just eat the mana. Goozle the mana. Alright, they're making their land drops. Alright, Signet. Cool. Get in there, you. Next turn, if we're lucky, we'll be able to char their, their big thing. If we're not, we won't be able to do that. Nothing. That's it. All right, they didn't have an action hand. They had a mana heavy hand. I think you have to keep some sort of action against red deck wins. If you don't, like you're just off the top deck, it's rough. They're just gonna strip mine there. It's pretty much a free wing because they know they can't draw into whatever big thing they were trying to draw into. Um, and then like free win on the first game. Black Lotus, <laughs> Mox, Land, Goblin Guide, <laughs> Hell Rider, <laughs> Take Seven. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have follow up to it, but. I think I had an Eidolon in hand or something like that, and then, like, a Fire Blast left. 
So I was drawing to land. Just draw to land, play out the Eidolon, and I don't know. First game was kind of silly. Kind of got some free wins there. Uh, the second one, kind of more off probably our um, our opponents, you know, just, just deck in general. Like they, and, and, and possibly it is they don't have a high density of threats. They need to have the mana to, to get their big threats out. Uh, that's a thing that can kind of be a liability with green decks. I love this hand. Uh, it's not, like, the best, but it's pretty good. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Alrighty. Alright, workshop. That's spooky. Beep boop. Alright, I got an answer to that, actually. I got an answer to all this. So, lightning this. Strip mine. <laughs> no big mana for you, sir. No big mana at all. <laughs> they make it see to that. That's savage. That is a savage comeback. Alright, red mana. Alright, they're wildfire deck. Cool. Just jamming. Jamming. I'm not going to wait on that dude. I'm going to be mana efficient here. I could burn off one of my dudes. I could be like, oh, boohoo, I regret it because they burn off my dude. But yeah, whatever. If they bolt one of my dudes, it's cool. They have to have pretty exactly bolt here, though, right? Um, I can't think of another. Oh, burst lightning. Burst lightning or bolt are in the cube. For instant speed, uh, one mana red spells. That would punish me for playing out the Dire Fleet there, but I think it's still right to do it. And if they play another non basic and wasteland them, just like, bleh. Alrighty. Alright, blue. Is there a blue red artifacts to play a Signet? Okay, this. Well, any land probably wins me the game here. <clears throat> okay, load Stone Arena. Ooh, that's real close. I attack with all. Yeah, probably. They're gonna block him. I think you'd block the Jackal Pup, right? Yeah. I take five here, but they go down to six. They're go at it. If I draw a land now, I just blow this thing out of the way, right? But they're pretty low on life. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> okay. Cold Orthor Forge Master. Cool. Well, that's going to be tough. Go ahead, my friend. <clears throat> they have a Sphinx of the Steel Wind. That would be savage. They'd have to sack all their stuff to get it. But if it's just like an Inkwell or something like that, I don't really care. Okay, Treachery. Well, what have you got? Okay. Okay, let me see what I draw here. Black Lotus. Nope, not a Lotus. Oh, are you going to use your Forge Master? No. They're not going to use their Forge Master. Interesting. I think we block here. Alright, dude. Okay, go ahead. 
not going to attack into that. Now I can just take five, right? I think I do, too. Get in there. All right, welder, cool. What is your big finisher? Is it Inkwell Leviathan or something along those lines? Am I dead to it is really the question. Okay, it's Mirror of Battlesphere. That's a big problem. So I can't attack into that. And they can weld it away. Oh, that's really bad. Yeah, I think we're dead here, actually. That's pretty savage. That's pretty sweet. Their deck looks awesome. By the way, we're going to need to hope they don't have, like, the workshop draw and we can get them. All right, this is going to attack. They're going to zone me for a bunch. And then they can welder back in the Lodestone Golem or the Koldotha Forge Master, both of which are pretty good. Oh, um, can I burn them out from here? Yeah, I could with, uh, yep. And this is obviously a must block. So what do we must block with? Probably this dude. Yep. And you have a burn spell. And now they have three blockers remaining, right? So my hope is they get Cold Oath of Forge Master back. All right, they, they're going to kill me. Wildfire. Oh, what is the last card you got? Actually, you know, they can. What do we got? I don't think Wildfire is per se great here. I mean, it could be. Maybe it's Wildfire. I don't know why you'd show it to me, though, honestly. At this point. Uh, Phyrexian Metamorph. Uh, Tinker? Okay, let's see what else you got. You have a Mind Slaver? This deck looks sick, by the way. This is a sick deck. Alright, Sundering Titanio. Alright, well, that blows up some lands and whatnot. Alright, blow up one of my lands. Cool. I honestly think... They're going to try to blow up two of my lands, okay. I think they're better off, honestly, just, um... Yeah, they tight, or welder it out and then get back the uh, Lodestone Golem. That's probably the line they're going to take. I would take that line if I were them. They're going to lose another land off of this line, but they're in a very commanding position regardless right now. I don't think my matchup against this deck is going to be terrible, though. Um... Because they're relying on Metal Worker and... Goblin Welder to do a lot of their heavy lift. They have some sick cards. I mean, they do have Treachery, which is pretty cool. They have Worker. They have Everflowing Chalice. They have some cool ones. They also have Kolothar More Forge Master, which is a big dude. Yep, into... Yep, Lodestone Golem. Makes sense. I would have actually probably put the Sundering Titan on the bottom, though. Or killed the Sundering Titan just to get rid of one more on my lands. All right. Let's let's joke attack in, see if they block. Rar. Yeah, they do. All right, I'll concede. If they didn't, I could have gotten them there, but I'll I'll concede there. They got me. Fair and square, and that's not a big deal because Red Deck wins does need to get beat up on a lot. Um, I want flyers in this matchup. No, I think I'm just resubbing it, guys. I'm going to have to play this time. Uh, Black Lotus uh, Jet draw again. <laughs> just be like, <laughs> Let's do that again. Let's do that nonsense again. That is some nonsense. I'll tell you what. That is some dire nonsense. Alrighty. Yeah. Keep. <laughs> this is the best Lotus ever, by the way. Black Lotus. <laughs> Red. 
this, this, <laughs> this. <laughs> Go. <laughs> oh, I don't care if I lose this. That's awesome. All right, islands. Lotus Bloom, cool. All right, let's beat the life out of him. Play an artifact. Play a signet or something out. Yep, there you go. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Black Lotus all one drops. <laughs> this is a great cube deck. <laughs> It's got two time counters left. Oh, you're in trouble, buddy. You are in trouble. <laughs> oh, goodness. Black Lotus. Anything different? No, just pray. <laughs> just pray they don't have, like, the turn one factor. I do have a lot of uh, land hate. This hand's good enough. It's not a horrible hand. Yep, let's keep. And go ahead. I land to go. Pup go. Okay. Mm. I, I wanted to strip there, but I, my own mana development is very important. Um, the worst here is they like actually have another land, or they have this. That's awesome for me. Go ahead and top. You have a repeal? No. Okay. Alright, land. What else we got? Alright, welder. Cool. Go ahead, my friend. Get in there, buddy. You got it. No lodestone, one time. Lodestone. Just play like a signal. Alright, lodestone. Alright, well, they got it. Um... You know what? Force them to use their welder. Could have gone to phase two, but that seems kind of dicey. What else have we got here? Okay. Here, Battle Sphere. Yep. Seems good. K. 
Okay. What else have you got, man? Fire Blast, best draw. Yep, these two are attacking. I think I'm taking all here. Yeah, I think I take all here. Okay, land. You have Tinker now. Draw to Tinker. Blech. You have Counter Spell now. Yeah, it looks like they do. Kind of sucks. All right, Cryptic Command or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, their deck's sick. Tinker, Mana Drain. Ooh. Can I win now? No, not even remotely. I'll go ahead and pack it in. That deck looks sick. Can't complain. Losing to, losing to Mana Drain and, uh, and Tinker. Not a big deal. I mean, we did get them with a Lotus on turn one with three one-drops, which is sick. I don't know how horrible that match up is in actuality, though. Like, I, I, they don't have a lot of life gains, so it's possible it's not like the worst. Actually, what really goozled me in that game was Lodestone Golem, of all things. Like, it was really hurting me. Um, I was like one man off each time, just casting my stuff, which kind of sucks. Quick pause, guys. All right, we're into the next game. Um, yeah, this hand's a keep. What's the best draw? Uh, turn one, Black Lotus. Turn one, draw Black Lotus. Um, we're on the draw, unfortunately, which is not where we exactly want to be. All right, well, if we're playing against Black White, I like my odds significantly less. Play Fire Drink Seder. Only reason being, I mean, it's probably going to run into a first striker here, but Zergo dies to Caracas. I mean, it's kind of 6 one half to the other. All right, hopefully they're just not playing good creatures. All right, Signet, that's fine. All right, this. If they uh, Toxic Deluge me, I think I'm fine with that. I want to incentivize Toxic Deluge over, like, Mind Twist or something, because I really want to get this Sulfuric Vortex down. It looks like it'll be pretty, pretty good here. They could, of course, just mind twist me as well. Just drop auto yields for that, just in case I want to pitch a, a fire blast. I doubt I would want to. I mean, if they Armageddon here, I would, but that would be a bad play by them. All right, Dark Rit. Cool. A Black Lotus, okay. Well, that's fast mana. Kill my board. I'm going to play a big thing. Alright, the Doomed Whisperer. Okay.
can get an attack in off this thing. But they need to be able to block my nonsense as well. And I have a rando fire blast in hand. Yep, Tassiger, that's cool. Putrid Imp, that's cool too. One second, I gotta think, guys. Do I wanna flash in here? So they'll block the Hazaret. They'll block the. Two damage gets through this way, two, then two. No, I don't. Wait, no, this gets four through? So if I turbo out the Zergo, and I activate the factory. Then two things gets through. That's four damage plus four plus two on upkeep. Yeah, I like that. All right, that's that's good enough. The math works. I think. They can do a lot of damage to me here, but I don't think it matters. Yep. Yep. Take four down to zero. Yep, cool. I go down to ten. Yep, F6. Cool. That is game. Alright, so they're reanimator of some sort, I think. All right, well, I don't think we have to change much here. I think we just go fast and hope to fade reanimation draws. Maybe we'll draw our Lotus again. <laughs> Turn one Lotus, three one drops in red. Quick pause, guys. All right, guys, definite keep. Him? No him. Just doing this all main one for F6 value through the attack step. And go. Cool. It has been killed. Okay, fetch land. Play an artifact down. I really want to see an artifact here because that'll allow me to uh, to probably get ahead pretty well. Yeah, that's perfect. Well, I would love to get that thing going, but I think what we do here is just Manic Vandal the, the Worn Power Stone and just smash for three. Uh, okay, that. Put the juice on him.
maybe a concession here. All right, they're paying for something, so that's cool. At least we're going to have some more stuff going on. Maybe they have a disenchant for the Salt Vortex, which would mean we have definitely a game on our hands. So our hand is Garbo. All right, Tassiger, cool. Well, we're drawing a lot of landage. Okay, Kite Seal Freebooter. Cool. My hand is Garbo. I think we take it for a turn here. Well, it could be flooding out. Get in there, you. When I say could be flooding out, we definitely are. I don't want to do five to us. Interesting. All right. Well, I think that's a risky prop because now I have to just do three. Can they kill me this turn? All right. I'm down to five. What else have you got, my man? Nothing. You have a kill spell for this. Okay. Play around Mana Tithe. I don't know why they attack with the kite sail there. I think that's kind of just doesn't seem like a legit play. Here's the reason why. I mean, like, I'm at five now, but that doesn't really make a relevant difference. Okay, they just concede it there. And they could have blocked to buy themselves a turn. So, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyways, guys, I'm going to go uh, ahead and cut this one here. 2-1 with red deck wins. Uh, pretty good run. I mean, we played it with some really sick Tinker deck. That was really cool to play against because you get to see some pretty cool stuff happen uh, with Tinker, Mana Drain, and then just uh, Welder, which you don't really get to see go off that often in Cube, and I thought was pretty cool. All right, guys, enjoy, and take care now.